on a sale today we are watching something that is very dark very emotional and very different from what I usually do on this channel I usually talk about Japanese culture or music but today it's about Korea and it's not something that is the nice side of Korea it's more so the bad side of Korea and it's about violence against women so I do want to say really quickly please guys if you are not in the correct mental state or in good health to be listening to something that has to do with violence please do not further listen to this this will discuss a lot of bad things and a lot of degrading things so please 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 if you are not in the right mental state for this do not proceed now I do also want to say before we get started that I am an outsider I am fully aware that there are differences in culture but I am watching a video of somebody that is also giving their opinion that is Korean so I do want to say that as well and it is kind of helpful to kind of see how the culture is especially when it pertains to violence now for me personally I feel like violence against women is universal you shouldn't do it I don't care if you're from Korea Thailand India you shouldn't hit women there's no excuse to I don't care what country you're from so that is my personal opinion like it hate it I don't care I don't care that the culture is different like you shouldn't be hitting women that's just in general um but in any case enough talking this is a video by dark Asian with Megan it is Korea can be a terrible place for women to live so if you want to watch the full length by yourself go into the links down below and click that link and check out her video because she does great great videos so in any case enough of me talking and let's just get started on the video if there are any Koreans or people living in Korea out there I apologize for the provocative title as a Korean living in Korea, I feel overwhelmed and saddened by all the negative news, especially when it concerns my own country, like I stabbing, stalking, gender-based violence, and many more issues. But I do believe it's important to address and discuss these issues openly because life in Korea can be very different from what you see in K-dramas. Recently, there's been yet another shocking incident here in Korea, but sadly it seems like this type of news doesn't even shock us anymore because dating violence is just so common here. I am not sure how things are handled where you're from, but over here it's a serious problem. It even makes you wonder how safe it is to raise a daughter here. And while I know men can be victims too, let's be real, it's usually women who are more often affected. So, a few weeks back, something really sad happened in Koje, South Gyeongsang province. A woman in her 20s named Lee Hyo Jung was hospitalized after her ex-boyfriend Kim beat her up pretty badly and then she died 10 days later. The police have started a detailed autopsy on Lee Hyo Jung and are on Kim's case for manslaughter by assault. They both just turned 20. Did she just say 20? 20 years old. That girl barely got to live her life. He, the assaulter, barely got to live his life. 20 years old. Uh, I don't understand it. I, I, to me, it's already given off that I feel like the assaulter was possessive. Because a lot of the cases that I hear about when it pertains to dating in Korea... Um, a lot of times the guys, even the girls, can be very possessive and controlling. And something tells me that it was more of possessiveness than love. 
I also do want to say really quickly, I like the beginning. She was saying that her seeing people in her country do acts of violence or do things that are terrible, it breaks her heart. I feel that so much. I've talked about it once on this channel. When I see people who look like me or I see people who are from my country and they do something that is terrible, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart even more when they do it to countries that I love so much, Japan and Korea. When they go out there and they do foolish things and disturb people and get violent. It breaks my heart because they are setting an example for other people who are not like them. I'm not like them foreigners. But the Japanese people aren't going to know that. The Korean people may not know that. Now, I know, obviously, there are some people who are aware that every foreigner is different. Every person is different. But I'm just saying, in general, it is a bad look and... There will be some who like to group people together and say, ah, black people, ah, or Americans, they are bad people. They're animals. They do terrible, violent things. Don't trust them. Don't date them. Don't be friends with them. Stay away from them. And it breaks my heart because not all of us are like that. So I felt her when she said, it breaks my heart when I see my own country do terrible things. That just touched my soul. On April 1st, around 8 a.m., he broke into Yoo Jung's studio apartment without permission and just went off, punching her in the head and face Ooh. and even strangling her. The day before, they'd had a big fight over the phone because Yoo Jung didn't want to meet him. The next morning, Kim, who had been drinking, just barged into her place and attacked her. Oh Yoo Jung gosh. ended up with a traumatic subdural hemorrhage and other serious injuries, and she had to stay in the hospital for Girl. six weeks. While she was there, six she... Six weeks? Oh, it was really bad. Six weeks in a hospital? That is like... A month and a half. Oh my God. Even wrote down what happened and told the police she wanted Kim to be punished. But then suddenly she got a high fever and passed away on the night of April 10th. After she died, the police charged Kim with manslaughter and quickly arrested him on April. I'm sorry I keep stopping, but that girl was fighting for a month and a half. And she still died. She fought to stay alive for a month and a half. And she still died. That just, that breaks my heart. That breaks my heart. Oh, sorry. I'm tearing up already. It's only two minutes into the video and I'm already tearing up. I apologize. But I'll quit stopping. She got a high fever and passed away on the night of April 10th. After she died, the police charged Kim with manslaughter and quickly arrested him on April 11th at 1.22 a.m. But here's the crazy part. By 9.20 a.m. that same day, he was released because the prosecution wasn't buying the story. Oh my they God. saw there was a lack of direct connection between Kim's assault and Lee's death. Ow. They also said that the emergency arrest didn't hold because Kim was cooperative. He had already admitted to the assault, informed the police of his location, and there was- Because I admit to stuff, I should be free. Somebody tell me, what is the logic of that? I admitted to the assault. Let me loose. There was no I'm need so to dumb. rush the arrest since they could have simply obtained a warrant. He put they her in the- also mentioned that the police were premature in arresting him before even receiving the autopsy results. So I feel they're being pretty laid back here. Then the very next day, 
the autopsy results came out saying Lee Hyo Jung died from sepsis caused by multiple organ failure. Hmm, I the police why. are still saying they can't directly link Kim's assault to her death yet. <sighs> but seriously, how does that even work? Like, how is it not direct? Police say... I jump down a flight of stairs. I break one of my legs. They get infected. They tell me, well, we're going to have to cut off your leg. It's too infected. Um... I'm not sure if it's because you fell down the stairs or if it's because of maybe some other situation that you had a precondition that may have happened that it caused you to like be prone to infections and whatever. The f you get what I'm saying. Like it, it's stupid to not link the direct attack or the direct incident to what is happening. That does not make sense. Why would you think, oh, huh. there must be an underlying condition that's n not connected to this situation that is causing the problem. Not the assault, not the constant beating, not the putting her in a hospital for a month and a half. Has no sense is made here. No sense. Oh the autopsy showed that the brain hemorrhage caused by the assault was minor mm -hmm. and likely not the minor. cause of death. But Hyo Jung's family argued that she had no previous health issues and they are skeptical of this. Maybe the problem was she kept getting beat in her head constantly. There were 12 instances of her getting beat. Maybe her brain just had enough. You know, it gets constantly knocked around. Initial report from the National Forensic Service. The police have now asked for a more detailed examination from the National Forensic Service to find out the exact cause of Hyo Jung's death. This thorough analysis is expected to take up to three months and the perpetrator will be free during that time. Hyo Jung's parents are devastated they are claiming that Kim had previously assaulted and stalked that her. That could not be a parent. So I, they paused the funeral proceedings uh, and filed a complaint against him on April 16th. Child. The police investigation is oh still ongoing, God. so we don't have much information yet, but I hope they do their job right, for God's sake. The history of violence between them goes all the way back to their high school years. The background story is that both Lee Hyo and Kim went to the same high school, high school? in Kojae and they started dating. Even then, Kim reportedly physically abused Lee. According girl, 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 girl. I'm gonna tell y'all right now. I'm speaking to the girls right now. Please, if he hits you once, he gonna hit you again leave if he loves to verbally abuse you leave if he is possessive obsessive leave leave i know there are circumstances where it's hard i'm fully aware of that but if it is early in the stage and you see ways out leave run as fast as you can Run, girl. Run. It's never a good sign. Don't take that. I'm telling you as a man, if I did not handle my situ my situation myself, if I didn't handle it, and I make you hear these false promises, it's most likely going to happen again because I didn't do the internal work to fix myself. So, no. Saying, I won't do it again, babe. I promise I won't hit you again. Does not work. That guy needs to go to therapy. He needs help. He needs help. Help. So please, if you see any signs like that, just please. Please leave. And I know some girls too. 
that love Korean men, love them. They, they love this idea of them. But at the end of the day, Korean men are still men. So please just be safe and just be mindful of who you're dating. Please. Just please. According to their friends, I he hate was an obsessive like this, boyfriend. Like... Lee thought she could escape from Kim after high school, but Kim ended up following her to the same university. A friend of the victim, also surnamed Lee, mentioned to the media he could have gone to a better university, but he chose to follow her because he right wanted there. to be with her. Lee's friends were aware of the assaults she had to endure. Like, I see. I shouldn't say possessive. What I should say is, it is very cute to want to follow your lover. It is. I get it. I understand it. You want to be with the person you love, or you want to be with the person you care about. And that's not me saying that he loved her. I don't think he did. But if you do love someone and you want to follow them, I get it. I understand. But after beating her... After beating her early in the stages, I don't think I don't think it was a good idea. You know what I'm saying? I'm hiding away. I'm running away from this guy. I'm figuring out how I can go to a different school and not tell him what school I'm going to because <laughs> that's some scary shit. Okay, like no, 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 no. Her friend Kang said that ain't cute. Lee's that ain't eyes romance. were often completely bruised and most times oh, she no. went to the hospital it was what? because she had been beaten another friend lee said that kim but was extremely controlling times. not even allowing her to go to the nearby convenience store what? and he was always monitoring her phone it was also known that kim assaulted lee in front of her friends the first thing they had a the lot of ups and downs in their relationship mm. and they were actually broken up when the last assault happened from December 20th, 2022, to the assault on April 1st, there were 12 incidents of dating violence reported between them, including cases where both got physical, according to records, but obviously she was trying to defend herself. One particular incident between July 2nd and August 1st last year led to Yodong getting a GPS tracking safety smartwatch after Kim assaulted her. Most of these cases were closed because neither of them wanted to press charges. And we will discuss shortly why victims of dating violence often choose not to press charges in such cases. Uh, a police a official idea. explained that while the police can step in with protective measures like restraining orders in cases of domestic violence or stalking, they're kind of limited in what they can do if the victim in a dating violence situation doesn't want to press charges. Okay. They also mentioned that Yo Jung never reported any stalking and it was Girl. hard to say for sure if the times they met up were against her wishes. I gotta see why she could. Of course they would say that. According to the police, they made sure Yo Jung was okay with the protective measures like the smartwatch and kept checking in to make sure she truly didn't want to press charges. The police spokesperson said they're going to keep digging into this case to get the charges right and they're also going to look into the possibility of stalking by checking out the data on their mobile phones. Okay. We will just have to see what happens with this case but honestly given how lenient things can be around these crimes in Korea. I'm not holding my breath that she'll get the justice she deserves, but I really hope she does. They always do a and terrible this... job. I've heard many stories with violence against women in Korea, and they never ever really start off trying to do the right thing. They always end up either failing the families and giving their daughters the justice that she deserves or they do give the justice that you know the girl deserves to you know lock the guy up but it has to come from the netizens to forcefully bash the police and get the police to act right it takes the community 
to get the police to act right. Why? 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 It, it, it's so clear that her being beaten was the source to her death. Why? Like, if this was in America, in America, this is a wrap. This is a wrap. First of all, you, you could go to court or, or go to a police officer and handle everything, and you're going to be good. I'm not saying that it's perfect, but you'll have a lot more help than if they're, I guess you were in Korea. Like, trust me, at least in my state, because in America there are different states, and in those states there are different laws. In my specific state, you hit a woman, that judge, however they feel you need to be in jail, you're going to be in jail. So if they feel like you need to be in it for 10 years, they might put you up there. If they want to be nice, do a couple years, they might do that. But I know one thing. They do not play when it comes to women and children. And I really do enjoy that. I really like that our justice system, while it's not perfect, it does try to help a little bit. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Dating violence is still a huge issue all over Korea. For instance, one horrific case from last July springs to mind where a guy locked up his girlfriend, then did some really degrading acts like urinating on her face and shaving her head. This case is called the hair clipper assault case. There's this woman, let's call her A, we don't know her name, um, who was basically imprisoned by her ex yeah. in his apartment starting Are they July. Ex? Like, I hate, I hate that we're calling this her ex. Like, I hate it because that's not an ex. That's not a boyfriend. That's not somebody that loves her. That's not somebody that cares for her. That's somebody that just wants her as a pet. That wants her as a plaything. It breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. Like, how could she ever trust someone ever again? How can she invite another man into her life to love her? How? 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 She's going to have to go through so much therapy to be able to even consider that. If she even wants to consider it at this point. Because some people, they just can't. Like, after this, they just can't. And it breaks my heart. It breaks my soul that somebody can't experience, you know, true love. You can't experience really having somebody that cares for you just because of an incident like this has happened to you. Now it's made it hard for you to continue on. And that's just relationships, let alone to be around other men. It gets to the point sometimes where it's hard for some girls to even handle men or be around them. You know what I'm saying? Like they just, they can't, they can't deal with men because of bad things that have happened to them because of them. And it breaks my soul. It really, really does. Seventh, last year. Oh. She shared how he first attacked her on the very first day they lived together and even threatening her to kill her parents and saying that he had a knife in his car. Oh, Over those four nights and five days of imprisonment, she lived in hell with this guy. He shaved her head to stop her from running away, urinated on her face, spit oh on God. her, oh my God. and even made her use a pet pad like oh. a dog instead of the bathroom. See what I mean? He wanted a pet. He wanted a pet, not a girlfriend. She talked about how he would choke her until she passed out. Happened like four times. 
She said he would hit me all the time and the more she tried to get away, the worse it got. She testified that she was raped daily. He even filmed her naked, kneeling down and threatened to leak the videos, saying he would store them where the police could never find them. On the fifth day, July 11th. How disgusting. You, why did you have to degrade her to this point? Not only did you torture her, you filmed her and then you R-worded her? Seriously, dude? And she finally got rescued Jeez. after she managed to text her parents for help while he was asleep. Her parents called the police right away and they came and got her out of there. She said the whole thing made her feel like it was her fault to the point where she even thought about killing herself. When the Girl. police and paramedics found her, it's she was fault. shaking inside a dog cage, all bruised up with her hair completely shaved off. She also explained that he was extremely manipulative, always getting her to apologize first for things she hadn't even done. He'd put her down constantly, saying things like, you're ugly and you and I are not even in the same league. And like, he the, was so obsessive. What is the whole point? Like, you, did you just want somebody to torture and keep as a pet? Because you definitely didn't want love or romance from this person. Especially if you are verbally abusing her, calling her ugly, we're not on the same level, like, then why the fuck are you with them? It doesn't make any sense. Excuse my language, but it doesn't make any sense. That if she didn't answer right away, he would bombard her with like 300 messages on Kakao. Red flag, 300 messages being bombarded by messages, please. Talk and call Ooh, at least 20 times. Calling 20 times? It's, it's Ooh, just long. a really messed up situation, but he's Nothing denying great. everything, claiming that any sexual activity was consensual and that he only hit her because she asked of him to. Of course he would say that. Proving dating violence is difficult because it's often seen as just a lover's quarrel. Kim, the suspect, denied all accusations during the trial, saying the sexual relations were consensual and that the victim stayed at his apartment willingly. The victim's father was devastated, saying it's heartbreaking that they had to argue about the rape's legitimacy because the two were dating. That After so multiple bad. assaults and having her hair shaved off, how can anyone believe a 21-year-old would consent to sex and even though she literally looked like she was tortured y'all literally found out evidence that he was peeing on her doing all this terrible stuff to her and that he r worded her what like come on bro that's not consent he had her locked up y'all saw her being locked up like a pet this does not make any logical sense hello hello somebody in that department has to have a brain somebody come on come on somebody has to have a brain come on like here's the evidence here's the police looking for the evidence just going in circles it's going to circles when they kid just went straight. It's right there. It's literally like any human being should be able to know. It's right there. The evidence is there. Of course she was not consenting to have sex with him. She got R word to do. She got treated like a, a, a pet dude. Come on. Oh, the victim testified that he strangled her until she passed out multiple times and even urinated on her face, he denied it all, claiming there was no evidence. The burden of proof often lies with the victim, particularly when the violence is behind closed doors and evidence is limited. After rescuing his daughter, her father took two weeks off work to gather evidence, searching for CCTV footage and more. To prove the abuse, he gave everything to the police, including the victim and perpetrator's phone passwords, telecom documents, gynecological records, medical reports of the injuries, and a psychiatric evaluation. You gotta do all this. The victim's father spoke to the media, 
about the impact all this has had on his daughter. He said she can't even look at herself in the mirror without breaking down and crying because of her hair. She ended up taking down all the mirrors in her room. She's only 21 at an age where oh, she should be enjoying life and it just breaks his heart to see her like this. He also mentioned that even though she's getting psychiatric help, going to sessions twice a week, she has tried to take her own life three times in her room. She hears voices that she can't control, gets overwhelmed, starts crying, and then just collapses into sleep. It's just really tough on her. He basically destroyed the life of a young woman who had so much ahead of her. So the prosecution charged the perpetrator with violating special law. I don't understand it. How can you destroy another person's life? She didn't get to live her life. And now it's impossible for her to live her life because of a violent man. Because somebody that decided to punish her for no reason at all. Oh, or maybe there was a reason for his entertainment. Because apparently that's what's most important. Apparently that's humane. Apparently to him that's what's right. Really? It breaks my heart. It really does. Laws against rape and sexual violence, in addition to charges of confinement and making. I want to say one thing too. Like, when was this video made? Cause she's saying the R word strong, and YouTube does not like that word. She was definitely demonetized because there's no way she's not and she said that word um very hard very clear but i don't have to worry about demonetization I don't serious know. threats I don't totaling seven charges they pushed for a 10-year prison sentence earlier this it. year on january 9th but on january 31st the court handed down a seven-year sentence in the first trial but he recently decided to appeal on the grounds that the sentence was unjust. So the case is still ongoing. The trial process itself is incredibly Shoot, difficult for the victim. While still receiving hospital treatment, she had to attend court twice to testify. Each session lasted over four hours. And during the trial, the defense attorney repeatedly insinuated that the victim might be to blame with oh, questions like, isn't it because you were caught with another man? Victim blaming. Didn't you have sex in unseen areas like the rooftop and stairs away from CCTV? And wouldn't it be impossible to shave your head if you were resisting? What? The victim had to take sedatives to manage her testimony and eventually she passed out during questioning. Her father, witnessing all this, was outraged. He said the questions were irrelevant and cruelly cornered her. This wasn't just secondary victimization, it was complete destruction of a person. I can't believe this kind of insensitive questioning is still happening in Korea today. Since the incident, the victim has been hospitalized in a psychiatric facility to receive treatment. Oh she once dreamed of becoming a soldier, but now struggles with daily life due to trauma-induced hallucinations, visual disturbances, and sleep problems. She is also undergoing electroconvulsive therapy to erase the memories of the event. She is terrified of retaliation. She said the perpetrator knows her home address and her family's routines. The perpetrator used to threaten her that he would hire a good lawyer to get out soon and come after her and her family until the end. 
experts say that ongoing dating violence can lead to more severe crimes, such as retaliatory murder. A recent example from May 2023 in Seoul's Kimcheon District demonstrates this. A man in his 30s killed his live-in girlfriend in retaliation just an hour after the police questioned him what? about a previous domestic violence incident. He waited in the underground parking lot of her apartment for about an hour oh before committing the murder. The police caught the suspect approximately five hours after the initial report while he was fleeing in his vehicle. Mm. But unfortunately by then, the victim had already died. Following this, the police planned to apply for a detention warrant the next day. Well, that could have happened earlier. There are instances where, despite victims wanting punishment, offenders aren't detained, leading to more serious offenses. For example, in 2018, a man in his 30s, who had been previously investigated for repeatedly assaulting his live-in girlfriend, murdered her a month later. Although the police requested an arrest warrant in March of that year after he assaulted her and tried to set their home on fire, the court denied it, citing the unlikelihood of him fleeing. He committed the murder shortly after being released. The persistence of dating violence is often linked to the legal concept of semi-consensual, non-punishable offense, where punishment cannot be administered without the victim's consent. Most dating violence cases are treated as simple assault, punishable by up to two years in prison, oh, or a fine not exceeding 5 million won. But if the victim withdraws their consent for prosecution, no charges are pursued. And since perpetrators often I know- pers I want 10 years. 10 years. Don't tell me five. I don't wanna hear that. I want them to be locked up. 10 years for abusing somebody. I don't care. 10 years. If you kill somebody, a life sentence. A life sentence. A life sentence. Like, uh, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Personal details about the victim's residence, workplace, and family. Many victims fear retaliation and choose to settle the matter privately. Unlike domestic violence or stalking, there's no legal framework in Korea that allows the police to take immediate and decisive actions in case of dating violence. For domestic violence, the law enables police to issue an emergency protective order if there's a risk of recurrence. In stalking cases, the law requires the immediate separation of the offender and the victim with a restraining order available upon the victim's request. But in dating violence situations, victims must explicitly request such immediate protective measures. And many wonder why victims remain in abusive relationships. Typically, perpetrators isolate their victims from friends and family and this exert control, talking. often escalating to physical and sexual. That's why I said, if you see the signs in the beginning, take those as probably red flags, most likely red flags. If you see any of it, any of it, Think in your head the most extreme situation of what may happen if you continue to pursue with this person that is acting weird. If you see it in the beginning, as early as you can, run away. Don't let it get to this point where he isolates you. We don't want that. Actual abuse. If gaslighting is involved, it can further complicate the victim's ability to yes. communicate their situation Literally. to others. Experts explain that dating violence often starts with psychological manipulation, like gaslighting, before escalating to physical abuse. This means that perpetrators control their partners, both mentally and physically, highlighting the need for careful protection in these cases. 
The urgency for new laws is clear, given the sharp rise in dating violence reports and arrests. According to the National Police Agency, arrests related to dating violence in 2023 reached 13,939. That is way too common. Holy crap. A 41% increase from 2019. Similarly, oh God, the number so of reported cases worse. jumped by over 26,000 in four years, totaling 77,150 in 2023. Jeez. Despite these concerning statistics, legislative efforts to protect victims of dating violence are stalling. Records from the National Legislative Information System show that proposals for better protections, including restraining orders, were made twice during the 21st National Assembly. But these proposals have not been discussed in the committee, indicating a significant gap in the legal framework that needs to be addressed to better protect victims. The slow progress in legislation concerning dating violence is partly because of the unclear definition of what constitutes a dating relationship. Experts emphasize the need to clearly define dating violence, including its nature, scope, and types to legislate effectively. Some experts suggest that laws should focus on restricting the perpetrator's access rather than just protecting the victim. They criticize current measures like giving victims smartwatches as inadequate. They say offenders should wear smartwatches instead. From the police's perspective, it's impractical to always be near protected individuals, and there is inevitably a delay in response when a violent incident occurs. To improve this, offenders should be fitted with electronic monitoring devices to prevent them from approaching victims. Mm. Justice is about preventing the perpetrator from that. reaching the victim, not making the victim avoid them. Dealing with dating violence demands a multifaceted approach that prioritizes prevention, protection, and prosecution. Effective legislation should clearly define dating violence, encompassing all forms of abuse within intimate relationships, and ensure that laws are not only adequate but also adaptable to the complex dynamics of these crimes. Law enforcement agencies need the authority and tools to intervene proactively, not only after an incident has occurred. Ultimately, tackling dating violence is about creating a culture that does not tolerate abuse and respects the dignity and safety of every individual in a relationship. By strengthening legal frameworks, enhancing protective measures, and fostering a supportive community, we can move closer to a society where dating violence is rare and swiftly addressed. I want to hear how dating violence is being addressed in your countries, so please share your experiences in the comment mm -hmm. section, and I think please it's great to that. engage in a constructive discussion about this important issue. That's all for today's episode, but I look forward to continuing this conversation and learning from each other. See you in our next episode. Those people, those men, they can't be human. They can't be human. They can't love those people. They didn't love them. They treated them like an accessory. They treated them like a pet. They treated them like they were something lower than them.
there's no way I can sit here and listen to them say that that was their ex or that was their boyfriend. No, no. No. They were not what that definition of what that is is. No. Any case, I'm sitting here trying to collect my thoughts. And it's hard to when it's something so dark and sad. And all I can think in my head right now is like, what was their last moments for the people that died? And what is the girl's feeling of her surviving her assault, but having to be in a psych ward? Like, I'm just thinking about those things, where their mind is at. And it just kind of brings so much sadness to my heart. Like, it, it, it really does. I know I've said that a lot this video, but it really, it really does. And I've heard a ton, a ton of crimes that happen in both Japan and Korea. And it breaks my heart. Now, obviously, where I'm from in America, there is terrible things that happen here too so I don't want you guys to be left on me thinking that those countries are bad no actually sometimes those countries are a lot safer a lot lot safer than America but America has its own problems for different reasons there definitely is abuse that happens and violence that happens against women for sure I really feel for um, the Koreans who see stuff like this and they just feel sick that there are people that look like them and that represent their country and are doing these bad things. That's so sad for me. Any case, I think I've talked too much. We are going on to 48 minutes, so I apologize. I'm sitting here ranting spewing out my thoughts and I need to hear up in the video. So in any case, thank you guys for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more stuff like this, please, please, please let me know in the comments down below. And uh, I guess I'll see you guys next time.